My son would ski every day if he could. But he gets out of school at 3 and the lifts close at 4, so that's not really possible. I've got a solution, though. This is a rope tow that I built a couple years ago. The motor's not attached right now, so I could bring it down the hill, but I have it kind of mocked up here for you. It's just an old snowblower motor. It's gone through a couple of iterations and needs to be iterated again. A couple of issues with it is... One, the way the rope tracks between the rollers, it rubs on itself, and you can see the rope is really worn. Two, you can see where this pulley has shifted over and is cutting into this piece. This is the back end from a Razor scooter. No surprise this thing's cobbled together out of a bunch of old junk. And the other thing is this drive roller is pretty well worn out. Just took a small wheel, took the tire off it, spaced it out with some washers, poured urethane in here. Works okay, but needs to be redone. So I want to make this roller wider, which means I'll probably have to lift the whole thing up, do some sort of different bearing setup. And that should give me a little bit more room so the rope tracks better. The set screw that holds this assembly in place is actually down in the valve stem hole here. Who came up with that? There are a whole bunch of ways people have made rope toes over the years. This isn't the only way, but this is what I came up with to balance the speed of the motor with the rope speed and keeping the rope from slipping. I didn't really want to do it this way, but I think I'm at that point. I know this thing shifted on the shaft, and looking down through the set screw hole, it looks pretty torn up. So I think this is actually just friction welded onto the shaft. And also, that's a spacer pressed into the hub, and it's just all welded together and was not coming out of there. So I've got a bunch of stuff here, and I guess I'm supposed to show you opening this stuff. I don't know really why you would want to see that, but hey, it's what people do. Deep Dream, obviously very high quality. Bearings. Smooth on PMC 780 dry urethane. So I'm going to take some of this stuff and you know what? Just watch the video. I'll have to do some more grinding here, but I'm thinking something like that. I blew it. Second time's a charm.
It always takes me a few tries to get a good neural going, but that one came out pretty well. And that should give a little bit more for the urethane to grab onto. I made four of these. Two, I think, are wrought iron. One's a hot rolled steel. One's out of a piece of threaded rod, just whatever I had. They're all ugly, but that doesn't matter. These are self-aligning bearings, which means that they can wobble around a little bit in case they're not mounted exactly right. And looking at this, it's really close to rubbing on this flange. So before I cast this, I want to go ahead and get this mounted and make sure that this actually spins freely. This is not a welding channel. It will never be a welding channel. I'll basically need to cut away most of this piece. I'm not proud of that, but I made it work. One of these days I'll get a welder that's a more appropriate size for doing this sort of stuff. And maybe even learn how to use it, but for now, let's just not talk about it. Just trying to get the belt lined up here before I drill in the other side. I'm going to say that's reasonably well aligned. There's kind of a lot of run out and everything here. So it's hard to tell if it's exactly right. But I think this is good enough that I'm going to tap this. So it is hitting here. Some of that is the wobble in this. So I'm going to do a little bit of body work and then if I need to, I'll go back and shorten up these rods a little bit. You know, I meant this as a joke, but it's actually not bad. Pretty much everything on here is too close together. I think the 200 thousandths I lost on the width of the roller is made up for by actually having a little bit more clearance. If I'm going to cast urethane on here, I obviously need a mold, and for that I've just got a piece of PVC pipe. Ran a bead of hot glue around there so it doesn't leak out the bottom. 
put some mold release on that and on this piece so I can pop this off, get the mold off. I did a little handheld 3D print of a pour basin here, and I think I'm just about ready to go. I figure I should read these instructions. Uh, mix, uh, temperatures, uh, vacuum degassing will further reduce entrapped air. I need a vacuum chamber. This is a piece of like melamine from the bottom of a treadmill. You can see there's a lot of bubbles in there. Of course, you can't see what's going on in there, but we'll give it a couple minutes. You know, sometimes I worry that I'm becoming a caricature of myself, just making stuff out of junk like this. And and just how absurd of something I can make out of an absurd piece of junk. I got some little bits of crud in there from the vacuum chamber. And it became very apparent very quickly that pouring this amount of urethane through a very small hole was not the best plan. It did kick toward the end. Uh, it got really thick, and I'm not sure if it filled up the whole way or just got so thick that it wouldn't pour through the hole anymore, but we'll pull this apart and find out. That looks like it's pretty well filled in there. Not really a whole lot of air bubbles in it. Look at that. Got some bubbles there right around where it was pouring in, probably because it was starting to kick toward the end. But overall, I think that came out pretty nice. As expected, there's some run out in this. Looks like it's about 40 thousandths of run out in it. I think it's pretty good for casting it out a piece of pipe. And I'm going to true this up on the lathe. I want to give it another day to cure before I do that. I'm going to get a tool ready. From what I've read about turning urethane, it's tricky because it's so soft and there's a pretty wide range of how soft it is. The one constant seems to be that you want a tool with an absurdly sharp edge and a ridiculous amount of rake and clearance on it. 
You basically want a tool that's going to cut it like a knife, not rub anywhere and risk melting the material. So I dug around, found this in my box of secondhand tool bits. Did a little bit of regrinding on it, and this is what I came up with. It's pretty well absurdly sharp. Yeah, I think that's pretty sharp. In the grand scheme of things, turning this down is probably entirely unnecessary, but I want to see what I can learn here. The feeds and speeds for urethane vary with as hard as it is. This material is an ADA shore hardness, which is on the softer side of what I should be able to turn. Much softer and you would want to grind it. But I'm giving this a shot turning it. It's about a 20,000th depth of cut. The range for urethane goes up to about 1,000 surface feet per minute. I'm gonna start this out at about 800. General rule of thumb is the softer the material, the sharper the tool, and the higher the surface speed. So this is super interesting. It's leaving all these strings because it's not cutting the whole way around. But the surface finish under there is actually really nice. Try a spring pass on this. There's one spot here that's not cleaned up yet. I want to try putting a little bit more nose radius on that tool. So as someone who's done this exactly once now, my advice would be sharp tool, high surface speed, and lots of spring passes. And that'll give me a, that gives me a surface finish that's perfectly acceptable for what I need. If you were trying to get a nicer surface finish and hit a critical dimension, eh, it might be a different story. One big advantage of this setup compared to the previous iterations is in order to get the belt on and off, and the rope. I don't have to fight with getting the shaft out of the bearings. I can just unbolt the whole thing. And because these bearings are butted up against shoulders on either end, there's not any room for it to slide side to side. So when I first made this thing, my idea was to kind of run the rope around twice like this, but it ends up just going over itself, snarling up a lot. I tried doing just one wrap around like that, and it just slips too much. And so after talking to a friend that's done some work on these things, he recommended running back and forth between a couple of rollers. And so far that's worked pretty well other than the issues with it rubbing. I thought about cutting some grooves in here, but I'm really not sure where this rope is going to track on there and it doesn't actually necessarily track straight around anyway.
Huh. Share your project on YouTube. There's an interesting idea. The rope gets a long splice here, which is basically splicing each strand into a different place. And if you want to know how to do that, look it up on another video, because I didn't do a very good job with it. First good snow of the season last night. We got about eight inches. It'll be a little thin, but let's try it out. The bull wheel at the bottom is just an old trailer axle, cut and welded at a 90 degree angle. After doing some testing, I did change up the routing on the rope, so it just goes around the drive roller once, but that seems to work pretty well. The safety system on this is pretty important too. There's an e-stop button at the bottom. One halfway up. And then at the top, there's a loop of wire run through piece of air hose and if you hit that it will unplug so if there's a break anywhere in the system it will trip a normally closed relay ground the ignition on the motor and shut the whole thing down thanks for watching and until next time keep on ripping